The next thing I want to look at is the step sequencer, which is another big update um, Logic did with 10.5.1. Uh, so the step sequencer is different than live loops. Step sequencer is in the piano roll editor area. So how I would go about using the step sequencer personally is for drums, but you can use the step sequencer for anything MIDI to create melodies as well. Under instruments here, I'm gonna click on the side and I'll go down to drum machine designer, which is gonna give me this interface. And now I can load in different drum, kicks, snares, hi-hat symbols into my little um, pad here. So I can also load full kits itself. So I can go into add the full 808 flex kit by double clicking on that. Now I have all the 808 drum elements in here, but I can also go down and to kit pieces and then add from Crate Digger or the, the toms from Dropkick or the hi-hats from After Party. And you can curate your own um, drum kit. So let's just say though, we were gonna use this 808 kick. So I loaded in the 808 kick and I'm gonna X this right now. If I want this window to come up again, I just have to press this DMD, Drum Machine Designer, and here I can get um, previews of all the sounds. So here's your kick, snare. So an easy way to make a beat quickly, um, instead of just dr drawing in a MIDI region, like stick to the pre again, and then I double click in here and you know draw the notes with MIDI, that's one way you can do it, and uh, pretty much the way most people did it before Step Sequencer. But now with Step Sequencer, we can delete that. I can completely delete this region. I just did TT to get back to my pointer tool. I'm gonna delete this. So I'm gonna put my cursor here, and then I'm going to press E. This brings up my piano roll editor. Here we were just in this section, and I can see Step Sequencer here. Now we have this new view where we have all the elements in our drum kit here and different squares. And I can click these um, little squares and I can hear the instruments, you know? And then if you play that, you'll hear, you'll see it's been populated up here and you'll hear what I just played. Let's make a beat with our disco rhythm guitar and disco synth stabs. And let's start on the one here. So let's delete that and we'll start the step sequencer again. So you can start a beat. So you'll see as soon as I press the kick, that, that comes up. So I have kick, let's do kick. Where's our snare? Okay, snare's right here. So kicks, let's do kick, snare, kick, snare. So right there, we just have a kick, snare beat. Very simple, but you can see how easy that was. beat here with I can double click on this to open up the sequencer again I can add maybe an 808 maybe a better snare hit if this pattern is too simple I can increase the amount of steps so let's go to 48 steps and this gives me more options to make a more um, diverse pattern so maybe it can be like kick snare kick snare something like that Maybe a double kick there. Maybe some snaps. There's a lot of things going on here, so let's dig into some of this. These numbers are really important. The 16th, uh, one, um, whole notes, ha um, halves, quarters, eighth, 16th, 32, and 64. So if I have 16th notes, everything is in 16th notes. That's, that means that each square happens to do with a 16th note. So if I want 16th hi-hats, you've heard this type of rhythm before. If I fill up all these bars with hi-hats, it will sound like this. If I want eighth note hi-hats, one way to do it is only fill in every second um, little 
color, a little square here, right? All right, like this. So these are eighth note hi hats. The the easier way to do that is um, let's just delete all this. Right click and clear row. That's faster too. So I can just go down here, go to eighth notes, and then fill up that. And now I'm on eighth notes. Same thing. I can drop that down to four, and now I'm. Um, A couple other things to mention within the step sequencer are like all the, if you click this arrow, you have different options here. Default, it has velocity and note repeat. So it, it is also a nice thing to do on your hi-hats to have some type of variety. And let me just scroll up my hi-hats so you can see a bit better. So if I drop down, I have my velocity and I can use this down arrow to like decrease all this, this um, velocity and then I can go back up. I want the first one to be a bit louder and you can go to some of them individually and get a bit of variety. Sound maybe more like a human. So let's just get this preview. So it sounds a bit more human in a way as much as we can make it sound human. Another cool thing is the note repeat. And that's if you like click on a window on a bar here and then just like scroll up or down when it hits this, play that hi-hat three times right now, or 16 times. So if I do three or four like this, it would sound, have a bit more rhythm. And then I can go and continue making that type of pattern, but that's note repeat. Lots of other options here, gate, loop, so loop, you can actually click and drag this, you know. And now it's just gonna loop the hi-hats. So the idea of the step sequencer is the flexibility to treat every track kind of separate. Like you can loop the hi-hats and change this to you know, 31, 32, and that's not gonna affect like the pattern of your kick or your snare or anything. You can change the notes here. That's not gonna affect any of your drum kit at all. It's really, all the elements here are mutually exclusive. So that obviously sounds too fast. So let's go back to eighths. The step sequencer can also be on any software instrument. So if we have the synth here, and we want a step sequencer also coming in at this where our cursor is. Let's open up the editor again, and we can see we have a step sequencer. And here we just have the notes of the instrument that we've loaded in. So you can go and create melodies as we created a beat um, with using the step sequencer. And the same thing goes with what I was talking about in terms of time signatures, uh, notes, velocities, all can be done in here as well. If we're happy with this beat, you know, we like it. And we want we want this to be our their separate MIDI tracks now. We can go um, right click, convert to MIDI region, and then right click again and go to MIDI separate by note pitch. And that's gonna give you all your drum elements on their separate track with their respective notes here. And then you can dig in further and edit the MIDI. You always have that option as well. Let's move on to section three now where we talk about samples and bringing in external samples from different sources and using them in our projects. So I'm going to stick with the drum machine designer here, undo what I did here. I'm gonna go back to the step sequencer because I wanna show you a way to use